This video will explain the flowchart that we can use to ask ourselves questions about the symmetry elements of a molecule in order to determine what point group it belongs to. So we start at the top here. First question is, is our molecule linear? And if it is, then we branch off over here and we ask ourselves one final question, which is, does it have an inversion center? Or equally well, we could ask ourselves, does it have a sigma h, a mirror plane perpendicular to that C infinity principal axis. If it does, then it's D infinity H, like homonuclear diatomics. If it does not, then it is C infinity V, like heteronuclear diatomics. So pretty quick, uh, pretty quick classification if we are a linear molecule. If we're not, then we say no, and we go down this road here. We ask ourselves, are there two or more axes of rotation where the where the uh, number of the axis is greater than two. So are there two or more C3s, C4s, C5s, etc.? So if there are two or more uh, principal, or if there are two or more axes that are higher than two, then we break down into this set of groups, which are the cubic groups, the special high, the special case high symmetry groups. If that ends up being a C3 principal axis with multiple C3s, that's a TD. If it ends up having multiple C4s, it'll be OH octahedral. If they end up being C5s, it'll be icosahedral uh, C5. So the first question here could be asking ourselves, does it have an inversion center? If no, then it's gonna be tetrahedral where that principal axis is a C3 and there are four C3s. Then we ask ourselves, is it a C5? If it's not, then it's a C4, and that's octahedral, where there are going to be three C4s. If it's a C5, then what we have is an icosahedral group like a buckyball. Okay, if we do not have that special case of one of the cubic groups, then we go to down the no side. We ask ourselves, is there a principal axis? So something of Cn greater than one. If the answer is no, then we start going down into the group of the low symmetry groups. We ask if we have a mirror plane. If we do, it's CS, where we have only the mirror plane and the identity. If it's no, then we ask if there is an inversion center. If there is, then we have the CI, only an inversion center and identity. If it doesn't have a principal axis, doesn't have a mirror plane, and doesn't have an identity, or sorry, doesn't have an inversion center, my bad, if it has none of these, then it has only identity, and it's a C1 point group. So those are the special case, pretty low symmetry groups. If it does have a principal axis, Cn, whether it's C2, C3, C4, C6, etc., then we go down here. Now we got to separate whether it's a dihedral group or a cyclic group. So we're asking ourselves, this highest Cn that we have, our principal axis that we determined we have here, are there n C2s which are perpendicular to that principal axis? So if we have a C3, are there three C2s perpendicular to it? If it's a C4, are there four of them? If it's a C2, are there two of them? If yes, then we're in the dihedral groups. Then we ask ourselves, is there a sigma H? Is there a mirror plane perpendicular to our principal axis? If yes, then it's DNH, things like borane B3 is sorry, BH3 is D3H, um, ethene, C2H4 is D2H, benzene, D6H. If it doesn't have that sigma H, then we will ask here, are there N mirror planes which are parallel to that principal axis? So in, so if we have a C2, are there two per parallel uh, mirror planes? C3, are there three of them? C6, are there six of them? If there are things like staggered ethane, which would be D3D, then we have uh, this there. If there are not, then it's just DN. All right, if we do not have those C2 axes perpendicular to our principal axis, then we're down here in the cyclic groups. Then we ask ourselves, is there a sigma H perpendicular to our principal axis? If there is, then it's CNH. If there's not, then we ask, are there uh, n sigma v's? Do we have n axes which are 
parallel to our principal axis, Cn. If there are, then it's Cnv, like water C2v has two sigma v planes. If no, we ask ourselves, are there, for our principal axis Cn, are there S2n axes? If yes, then it's an S2n. If no, then it's just going to be Cn. So using this point group, we can classify uh, any molecule that we're given based off the symmetry elements that it has. So the biggest thing is to practice enough that you can identify the symmetry elements in the molecule and then uh, correctly answer the questions, splitting you off into the different kinds of groups. So one quick practice that we'll go through here. Uh, if I have the water molecule, I have a C2 and two sigma Vs there. So if I ask the questions about water, is it linear? No. Does it have two or more uh, CNs of N greater than two? Well, its principal axis is C2, so no. Does it have a principal axis? Yes, it has a C2. Are there two C2s perpendicular to my principal C2? They're not, there are only the one C2. Does it have a mirror plane perpendicular to that principal axis? It does not they're both parallel to the principal axis, so no. Are there two sigma v's which would be parallel to this principal axis? There are, so that splits me off here into C n v, where n is determined by my principal axis, C2, so water is a C2v molecule.